let's bring in Heidi Prisbala, senior politics reporter at USA Today, and Jay Newton Small, Time Magazine contributor. Welcome to you both. Uh, Heidi, first to you, what's the mood like inside the White House? I actually spoke with someone who had just gotten off the phone with a senior administration official a couple days ago, and they said it's all about damage control at this point. And frankly, there's an aspect of this, Alex, that we're not covering, which is I think some of the people who are most anxious at this point are the national security advisors who are worried about just how distracted the president and his top staff are when they look at hot spots like North Korea. That's something that I think is, is a great uh, uh, worry to them. And what was significant about this week was that you started to see, finally, some cracks in the Republican support on the Hill. When you see members like Trey Gowdy speaking out and saying, mm -hmm. you know what, this was a turning point when we learned that Donald Trump Jr. had this meeting, because what did we learn? This was a big week. That the Trump officials actually knew about the Russian uh, attempts to help them, that they welcomed it, that they discussed even timing over the summer, that, that they used that information as well. Despite whatever happened, whether there was no follow-up or there was follow-up, they did use the information that the Russians dumped in the form of WikiLeaks. It was very effective. And at the back end of all of it, Mike Flynn at least attempted to reward them um, by discussing lifting sanctions. Yeah. Well, you, you make a very good point because regardless of what may have been said for some, it's really the silence is deafening in terms of uh, fewer voices coming to the defense of the White House right now. So, Jay, we've got this story about Trump Jr.'s meeting completely overshadowing the president's two European trips. Uh, some of his aides felt that he had really good days, particularly the day in Warsaw, Poland, with that scripted speech that he delivered. Does it feel like he's just snatching defeat from the throes of victory here? Um, I mean, certainly, the, I, I've, in re repeating, not to repeat what Heidi said, but certainly in talking to people on the Hill that I've heard from, one of their biggest complaints has been throughout that um, his tweeting and the Russia investigation really are just such huge distractions to all the kind, every every attempt at legislating that they've had. Um, and this week has been by far the worst. And you talk to people on the Hill, and they just say there's nothing that's breaking through, nothing that's getting done. Um, and all the focus and all the attention is on this scandal that just keeps going and snowballing. And there is a huge sense of frustration. You hear from a lot of Republican lawmakers saying, look, why don't you just go find out every contact, go find out every single thing, dump all of this information, because this drip, drip, drip that's lasted the entire sort of arc of the presidency is just eating away at every single thing they're trying to do, and, and it's only getting louder and louder and louder. It's better to just clear the air, no matter how bad the story is, let the chips fall where they may, and then restart, and then begin a separate conversations about, you know, to try to restart the legislative process, restart the political process, and then have the investigation ongoing. But if you keep hiding things, if you keep saying, no, no, there's nothing else, there's nothing else, and then two days later, for example, saying earlier this week that no one else was in this meeting, nothing mm -hmm. else was happening, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden we find out that this very prominent Russian lobbyist was in this meeting, and that there were a couple of other people in the meeting who we still don't know who they were. So as this information drips out, right. it just is so damaging, they just want to get over it with. Uh, what about, Heidi, the sense that I guess what the president knew or did not know. Of course, his attorney, uh, Jay Sekulow, is saying he did not know about this meeting until everything was coming out in the news just a couple of days ago. Um, is that widely believed? It's not widely believed by Democrats, certainly. You already hear Democrats like Senator Blumenthal speaking out and said it's totally not credible. The challenge here is that the timeline is, is very um, damning because we now know, as we match up these data points, that it was not weeks, it was not days, it was hours from when the meeting with the Russians was set to when the president started tweeting, or, or, or had his speech, rather, about potentially damaging information about Hillary Clinton. Of course, then it never happened, and that lines up perfectly with what Donald Trump Jr. said, which is that they didn't, in that meeting, have damaging information. Um, the timing of it coming out in the summer after the convention, mm -hmm. the timing of WikiLeaks coming out, uh, their first major dump within hours of the Access Hollywood videotape that was so damaging to then-candidate Trump. So the timeline itself is very suggestive. Now, let me mention one other thing. Uh, based on my reporting, we know also that Donald Trump was actually physically present in Trump Tower the day of that big meeting. Not only that, but he had a luncheon and was with Paul Manafort hours before that meeting. So certainly, if he wanted to be briefed, if they considered this an important meeting, he was right there for it to happen. 
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.